tuatahi ake um, ka timata i ka tātou kui komiti mō te koukou a ki te karakia. I will open our te koukou transport committee meeting this morning uh, with our council prayer. Inoi tātou. Ka tuku mātou kia kaha mai ngā māngai ko whiriwhiri hia mō te kaunihira o te hiku o tika ki te mahi me te ngākau awaha, me te haka mahi i ngā pūkenga, me te mā tauranga i roto i ngā wānanga, me ngā haka taunga ki haka tūri ai te tahi hapori e mata tika ana, e tūko tahi ana ka mutu ka haka piki anō i te oranga o tō tātou rohe, ka haka tau anō i ngā take o te rohe i runga i te tika me te pono. We ask that through Council's discussions and decisions, the representatives we have elected may govern the Far North District with imagination, skill and wisdom to achieve a fairer and more united community that enhances the well-being of our district and solves the district's problems efficiently and effectively. Amen. 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 Uh, West side in the house, tēnā koutou katoa nau mai haere mai, piki mai kake mai ki rotu i te whare kaunihira o te hiku o tika ki te kai kohe kohe nei. He mihi anō ki tēnei ki a koutou e te whanau o whai rātahi ko a hono Minister Zou. I just really want to, before we kick off into things, just offer that welcome to Council, be it virtually or be it in person, and it's great to have you here. And we'll pass over to you in the room shortly, but we've got a few technicalities and formalities to go through first. Oi no, no mai hai. I'll just... 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 Kiyunga Councillors, I will move apologies for Councillor Anne Court for today's meeting. She is uh, over at Te Pua Waitanga in yeah. Kaikatearoa in Waipapa, uh, working with a group on our New Bay of Islands Sports Hub over there. If I could get a second bit for those. Sure. Thank you, Councillor Rakina. And uh, apology for Councillor um, Pleskevich, are you happy to accept that one as a part of your second thing, Councillor Rakina? Aye. 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 yes. Aye. My um, kahika, my hearing aid isn't working, so kia kaha te kōrero kua. Aye. <laughs> We uh, have moved and seconded apologies for Councillor Court and Councillor Kleskovich. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed or abstentions, that is carried. Thank you. Uh, for those online, uh, we have a number of members who have joined us online. If you could indicate in the chat box for our GGs if you are opposed or abstain to anything, otherwise I will... Um, Assume that you are voting in favour of the motion. If we could do that, please. Um, just a few announcements before we get into our deputations. Uh, copies of our agenda for today's Tikoko Transport Committee meeting are available on our Far North District Council website. This meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded, uploaded to our Far North District Council YouTube channel following this. Uh, in the Maramataka Māori today, is um, Rako Matohi. So actually this morning, the full moon Rako Nui was still up bright in the sky. So bringing a lot of extra energy that I hope permeates into our decision making for today's meeting as well. Uh, I also just wanted to acknowledge Daniel Henson, who was a Ventia worker, who um, is one of the contractors for our Northern Transportation Alliance, who uh, tragically passed away at a Dagobah work site last Tuesday. Um, a one of the Ventia workers for NTA passed away last week. Um, no reira uh, ite atua hoa tu ki a te oki oki ngā tonutanga a kia whiti ki a te mara matanga mutunga kore. 
The two and all rest is grant upon him, O Lord, and may perpetual lights shine upon him always. Amen. Uh, uh, Adel final, I believe today is his funeral, so we have a few apologies from the Transportation Alliance staff who are attending that today. Uh, we'll get into our deputations now. Um, our first deputation is from Paula Matthews, who is joining us virtually from Te Ahu Tenta, I believe. And Paula is uh, giving a deputation to our committee regarding the Taitasi Just check that you can hear us up into Hiku there, all right? And we are happy to pass the time over to you for your deputation. Morena, guys, you'll just need to unmute on your little box that's just time to view. Good, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Away you go. Away you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, application to Tarsi or Paratahi Road. My husband, Nigel, and I have res resided on Paratahi Road for 44 years. <clears throat> Nigel was diagnosed with cancer, along with five other residents on our road. Three mm. have since died. Other residents suffer with respiratory conditions. Mm. In the last 10 years, there has been an influx of sections sold, new homes built, which naturally increases the flow of traffic. Hence the horrendous amount of dust that is generated. That is, this is not healthy for residents with respiratory conditions or any health conditions. Also, the dust is contaminating our drinking water. Three sections are ready for sale. There is a new subdivision with nine new sections to be sold, as well as another subdivision in the process with four sections. In total, there will be at least 16 new families bringing a total of 44 families living on our 3K road. Each household would have at least two vehicles. The residents are not happy that these sections have been approved without any contribution to the improvement of our road. At present, there are eight families with homes within 30 metres of the roadside and seven families within 80 metres. In total, there are 15 homes positioned close to the roadside. With new sales, there will be many more. There are many businesses located on our road, a holiday retreat, a heavy truck and digger contractor, a 50-ton logging truck travels the road twice daily, and safe trek traffic vehicles. All of these are in addition to household car traffic and stock trucks, or contributing to dust pollution in the poor state of the road. Over the years, residents have been frustrated at the lack of maintenance on Paratahi Road. The corrugation is shocking, and during winter, some poles are formed. Vehicles are damaged by driving over the corrugations, and this causes higher maintenance costs. The drains are not maintained, which in turn cause flooding onto our property and others in winter. Uh, just like to say there, I've attached a video. Hopefully you could see the flooding that is on our road. Residents are angry that when complaints are made to council for maintenance to be carried out, at times they are not followed through and the jobs have been closed without a satisfactory result. The residents feel further subdivision, subdivisions should not be approved without the road being tar sealed. We feel it is a health issue and a subdivision issue, and we ask Far North District Council to tar seal our road. We have approached all the residents on our road and have the approval to speak to this meeting to put our case forward. Okay, um, I've got some questions here. Where are we on the roading matrix? Would like to know. You aren't. We aren't. That's a good start. <laughs> okay, we aren't. I think we wow. should be, yeah. Wow. Considering the amount of residents on our road. But anyhow, so how do we get on it? On it. Okay. Do you want to buy Paula? 
Um, the way that standing orders uh, manages our deputations is that you are given time to speak and then you can pass over any remaining remain, remaining time to councillors to ask questions for more information. If you have any specific questions, though, what we'll do is take note of these and follow up. But um, unfortunately, standing orders doesn't allow us to become a two-way uh, discussion kind of a point. If, um, if we could just respect the constraints that I have to follow within our uh, rule books for this, but we can, we'll take note of any specific questions and we'll absolutely follow up on those with you. Or there might be questions here that uh, try and tease out a little bit more information as well. Can Okay, I understand that. Can I ask two more questions and leave it up to you? Thank you. What do we need to do to get on the list for sealing? <laughs> What do you suggest our next steps should be? Have you got any questions to ask? And um, members may want to weave responses in with their questions. Deputy Mayor Stratford. Kia ora, Paula. Thank you very much for presenting that to us. Um, have you done a submission to the Northland Regional Land Transport Plan? Mm -hmm. What was that? Sorry. Can members please be quiet while I'm talking? Um, that's Councillor Radich. I'm um, sorry, Paula. Have you done a submission to the Regional Land Transport Plan? No, because I didn't realise I had to do that. And um, will you be prepare, preparing a submission to our long term plan, which will be opening yes. up next week? So, yes. <laughs> what we'll do is make sure that we send this information out. Now, the submissions for the draft regional land transport plan have closed, but our long term plan and the funding that we uh, will be setting up to spend over the next three years will go live for consultation next week. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> That's an avenue to definitely follow up on ensuring that we have funding available to put to this sort of thing. Because uh, right now we are we have not planned for it. Okay. Yeah. Are there any further questions from the floor? Yeah, Ma'am Pogo, Mary Radic. And then we'll go Councillor Foy after you, Councillor Radic. Sorry, Felicity. Oh, that'll be interesting. Um. Look, Paula, I feel what your residents are going through regarding the state of your road. I've been up that road many times when you put in complaints and I've been there about the corrugation, the dust and the potholes. And I don't know how many times I've brought up in my years in this council, particularly in the last six years, regarding the condition of our roads, not only your road, but other roads, Road Oliver. I'll give you an example. Sorry. Question? Councillor Radic, if you could weave that into a All question. Right, okay. I, I could just say this, say this to you, Paula, that a lot of them have come and complained about their roads, and we take it in, and guess what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. That's it. Go over to Councillor Foy. Uh, thank you, Mayor Uh And thank you for the presentation. Uh, so I've got two questions. Uh, first being uh, the unsubsidised, um, well, a long-term plan policy that Hupara Road used uh, to seal their road. I don't know if that policy is still available to um, to applicants uh, for road sealing, uh, where council pays a portion and the residents pay a portion. I would just like to table that with our council and ask our NTA and our long-term uh, plan staff that question to get back to uh, Paula about that. Uh, secondly, with our, uh, with our um, NTA, 
Uh, in terms of the Roading Centre of Excellence and the rebuilding of roads, and uh, which includes doing works to reduce dust and doing the water table drains, basically rebuilding the roads. Uh, is there a list and a priority set out uh, for that? Because that's part of what we've tabled in our, um, in our long-term plan as well. And where does Paitatahi Road sit on that um, list of priorities or not? Uh, and also looking at uh, the, thir the third statement I would ask, and I know that we don't have any of our planning staff here, but Paula brings up a relevant um, question about new subdivisions and how we interrelate that into growth planning uh, and how we look at new sections coming onto the market and the number of traffic movements associated with that in the rural zone in particular. Will our staff um, from our roading team come back to us with the number of subdivisions being undertaken, including this road, and where that increase in the number of uh, titles interrelates with the standard of the road and how uh, the road standard is going to be with those subdivisions. So those are three questions for our staff that would be able to ask Paul, answer Paula's questions. Uh, but um, if that's so, okay with you, more forward to come. Councillor Poy was raising those as questions to Paula to put to our staff. I'm just to come up with solutions for you, Paula. I'll Thank you very much. Uh, what we'll endeavour to do is to have Ali as our Tokoko Transport Committee um, lead governance staff member to capture the questions that have been put across here and to work with Northern Transportation Alliance on getting some responses across to elected members as well as our deputation. Um, members today. That's all right, Ali, if we could capture that. And I've got those questions there as well. Um, thank you very much for your deputation to our council. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Felicity. One more question for you, sorry. What address is the rural subdivision occurring at on Paratahi? What address? 47? Uh, oh, what thank you. Oh, oh, no, 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 not 47. Um, Oh, it's called what? Rangia, Ranga? Ranga Unu, Ranga Unu Heights. The subdivision is called. That, that, that's in, yeah, Ranga, Ranga Unu Heights is the new subdivision for sale. And then there is another neighbour that is looking at subdividing four. And you said here. Two, yeah. yeah. And then there's two sections also for sale down there. 138. 138. Parate Road. Parate Road. So, Thank you very much for your deputation to our transport committee today. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll look forward to seeing some of those responses come through about BCC and keep in the loop as well. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for listening. What's younger in the house? <laughs> Lucky Fire Hilda is hard of hearing today. She won't have to pick up on the growling I'm about to get, I think. No? No. Um, kia ora whanau. We have two deputations. Uh, who wanted to go first? I just need to set my, up with my computer. That's all. So if somebody wants to help me, I'll go first. I don't mind. Our um, second deputation today is from Whaamina Pumare Paita regarding Pangu and Motuti Roads. I steal some time then. I haven't started the time yet. Okay. So I can still some time. I, I, bueno, I, Dine, what, uh, Imihiana Kapi de Kahika, uh, Koto Ko de Konihira, Koto e Kako Kanohi, Inga Tudu Mo Momato, I, if I hold her, a queer de de Kofoi, a Tamati Koto Kunga Kanohi, a Maori. Koto e whakakanohi mo tātou e mihi ana kia koutou. Uh, mihi ana ki taku whānau. Taku whānau ki tia no hau ta hara mai, mai uh, tāmaki. Ai, rungo 
tēnā pēr ai rongo kaitai he krani mama hau i nei ai ai mi yana akia kaitai e ho hat ho hat e hare mai mai te rori mai tamaki ki konei na te praka o te wera te ra rori Brent Derwins ko praka kato wera te kahari huri rona ho e no mi yana mi yana kia kaitai mo te nei a wahanga ka turio fire e te no turi o te rana okay. え、みやなはい、クイカの方。ロコパタタキアイ。あの、ちゃんとチェアティーチャー、アンティス、カサンチ、みやなかこれ。ベワキタウイラポキ。イティナイアタ、イタイラタウキテパヌクテポチラ。
just checking that uh, those online can hear us. We're back in chambers. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Floyd. And if, have you resumed the recording for screen? All right. Thank you. We've managed to sort out our technical difficulties here in Council Chambers. And I'm happy now to pass over to Baimina Pumare Peter uh, for a deputation on our Pangaru and Motutini roads. I just also want to acknowledge Baimina that you have uh, Tawira students from Te Kura Taumato Pangaru who have come over to Kaipe today. Uh, the long way around? Yes, the long way around. Long way around. I uh, just want to acknowledge you, Tamariki, uh, Tamariki, for coming into Kaipe here today um, to be a part of this deputation with your Tumwaki, with Whaimina. It's really always great to have uh, young people in our whare here at the council because you are the future leaders of our district. Actually, you are already leaders in our district. So, uh, Really great to have you in the party today. I'm in the happy to pass over to you now. Hi, Tina Tata Katoa. Um, well, for Mihi Hau Nga Mihi Kia Koe e Te Kahika, uh, kaurua ko te kōwhai, a koutou ko ngā mema o te kauni i rano reira. Uh, uh, mihi ana kia koutou i tēnei wā. Um, let's get into it, because I only have 15 minutes, and I've driven a long way to make sure that... Um, um, the impact of the kōrero that I give today mm -hmm. and how much impact it has on our people of the hukianga. Um, and, you know, I, I was thinking about just coming in online, but I knew that my people would be disappointed if I came in online because some things you just have to turn up to, mm -hmm. and, and this is one of those days. So, mihi ana kia koutou, sending me out the, the uh, reminder that I was um, given this time. So... I've been reading, obviously, around the roading and how the tools that are used by the council and by engineers to um, create or to basically tell us which roads are going to be done up and which roads aren't. And um, so I've been looking at your attributes and, you know, and I just think, well, we know that by looking at those attributes, we're not a priority because of where we live. And we know that these attributes give you data to satisfy your budgets and the next group up the food chain. For us who are the locals, we have our own narrative for each of these attributes. 19 of these attributes, according to what I've read on your website, you rely on are largely dependent um, on aerial images, on local directories, on local authority and government data, and manually are entered into the prioritization matrix. That's what is said. That's how you guys get the stuff. And basically, um, for, for us, that is essentially unfair. It's unfair because it may look like you have gathered data, but if you look more closely, you actually haven't. You have only done what any layman could have done by standing by on the side of the road and gathering data, watching traffic, and counting how many rainy days. Because of those 22 attributes, 19 of them you say, you know, you get your information from somewhere else. The three things that you look at are the amount of vehicles that go on those roads, the rainy days, and, and one other thing. But you mm -hmm. don't, you know, but any layman could stand there and do that stuff. So why bother doing, say, putting up all of this stuff when you actually haven't really looked deeply into the ecological areas? into the location of the roadways. Why do that? Why is that such a big prioritization tool that you use? Sure. Um, um, for us, that's, yeah, so it's an unfair system of reporting for us in the Hokianga. For us, it's like saying we've been, well, we've been to, to have a look, but these two things are the most reliable data. So we will just make some decisions based on these two or three attributes. Yes, one please, Ali. What a waste of time. And a load of codswallop. That's how you see that. Because in our mind, we live there. We live there. Your prioritization matrix must include our people and our people's narrative. Please, Ali. Our people are natural, manu taiko. 
They are natural manutaki. We are the sentries of our whaina. We know who goes in and who goes out. And that was confirmed during the COVID lockdown when we had a lockdown into our home. We knew who was coming in, we knew who was going out. We knew who went around the powering away around the, the, the golden stairs. Like we knew all of that. Our people are natural at that. We know what's going on. Our people are natural observers. We have kanohi or middle middle. They will tell you how they see it, how they feel it, how they hear it. They will tell you that. Our people do not work in isolation. We work in groups. We're natural at working in groups. We love it. Our people assert their relationship to the land. We are the tangata whenua of their kind. Through whakapapa, we assert our relationship to the land. Through puraka, through our stories and through our waiata, we assert our relationship to the land. And yet nobody asks us what's going on. Our people are the bottom of the prioritization ladder on every social level in our own country. In spite of all of your tools or matrix that you use to categorize us or homogenize us, mm. we are Māori, according to a word that was coined to call us. Where we come from, we are strongly Ngāti Manawa, Taumāwi, all of our uh, Waiariki, Kaitutai, Te Rarawa Te Iwi, Wera Wera. That's who we are. And we are strong about that. My people are the tangata whenua of this country. And therefore, we have an innate connection to the land. It's important that you understand that. So, next one, please, Ali. So, what can you do, you may ask? I want you to consider the following. Let locals collect the data over a period of three years. Three year lots. Make the contractors like what Broad Spectrum and Fulton Hogan or wherever they are employ 10% of the employees, must be locals, must be from home, and don't get them to be pre vetted for everything. They're only standing there watching the road, checking the culverts, all of that sort of stuff. <laughs> Let the locals tell their own narrative by allowing us to do the research. Let us do the research. Let us do the interviews. There are distinct groups, for example, of commuters from two o'clock to six o'clock in the morning at home. It's busy. People are leaving. You could have a kai cart out there at two o'clock in the morning and our people will be picking up coffee. Okay. That's how many are leaving. They know what's going on. Daily workers, etc. Those that leave their homes at 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. then return between 4 and 8 p.m. We've become used to that with the logging trucks and that industry in our area. We've become used to that. Let local people keep records of events that bring people home. Rural communities are busy. That is a myth to say that they are sleeping little places. Sleepy little places, they aren't. Every, they are and have always been busy. Most Manai, for example, are booked out every weekend for Hui, for one for workshops, for meetings, a whole range of types of meetings. Working bees, noho taia, those have been known for 15 years. Problem solving, working through our issues, working through problems we may be having. Māori don't work in isolation. We gather to discuss, debate, but we always reach consensus. We always keep on hui, hui, hui until we get to something you may not like what the, what it is but it is a consensus we believe the core of the whakatauki for the kaya te rangatira ko te koru because when we hui we connect and when we connect we are well we are strong as fano as hapu and as iwi so you may ask what do you do you involve us in their prioritization matrix tool that you use to come up with whether our road should be fixed or not. I have come here to talk about all of that. I've already done all my growling to Moko and to Tamati about the specifics. I just wanted to give a general picture of how we are as a people. Order. I totally believe in the intellect of my people. That's why I've been home for 28 years to tell mm. three, you know, 
and, and over three decades of being in the education system. I totally believe in the intellect of our people. Next one, please, Ali. And so um, our people have said, have sent me letters. They've sent me letters because obviously if I'm going to be um, presenting at council, I'm not going to go there by myself. And all of, yeah, I've been home 28 years, but I still might get it wrong. Hey, I still might get it wrong. So Auntie Hine, <laughs> who's here, Auntie Hine has sent me a order all um, and, and a few other other uh, locals, people that commute, they have sent order all. And when you read it, you know, you say to yourself, okay, um, this is the stuff that we would expect to hear. But you know, you're not really listening if you're just thinking, oh, yeah, there's another one of those talking about the potholes, talking about the, um, you know, the, <coughs> the fact that the council haven't done anything. No, no, no. When you read through these, these letters, when I put the, um, the corridor out to the community, they're talking about real um, wear and tear on their cars, you know, like going, having to go to work, having to put up with all of this stuff every day, all the time. It's urgent. It's urgent that you address our roading. It's urgent that you turn the barrel upside down, that you treat us as if we are first class citizens. Thank you very much. <laughs> tangata whenua, tangata tiriti, first class citizens. Thank you very much. That's what we want. And it's really important that you do that. I'm sorry, but I don't know what's happened to my computer. Okay, here it is. So I'm just, because Auntie, Auntie Hine is here, I'm just going to read out Auntie Hine's, and then I'm going to just go to one more slide, and then that will be the cut. She had to go in 15 minutes. <laughs> Ali, a legislation in 15 minutes. Um, Okay, I get it. The two day. Okay, I get it. Okay, it's really quiet. Exactly. <laughs> um, sorry, Ellie, can you come here? Just help me do this. Yeah, I just need to. I just want to read her letter in one minute. Maybe he needs Corey or not. Stop here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we West Coast Road, urgent priority. This is from Antihini. We experienced the challenges of our roads on a seasonal basis. For two years now, two winters, the corrosion of West Coast Road has been quite scary. The winters are followed by summer months when dust becomes the main problem. The lack of metal combined with no maintenance has created great potholes on our roads, making our journeys uncomfortable and exposing our vehicles to costly wear and tear. And I just want to just pick up on that around the maintenance. <laughs> maintenance. <laughs> have you been, have you seen a truck come in? Have you seen how they aren't full? The trucks, mm. trucky come out, and you would think that they would be, they're not full. They're not full of metal. So somebody's ripping somebody off. Our key roads from Motiti to Pangaru, Waiho Nui Arua, Rangi Point, and Martini to connects communities who drive daily on a West Coast road and a highway covered in dangerous potholes. Let's just talk about what's tea. Our people, a delegation in 2001, in, in the beginning of 2002, went to France, to Lyon in France, to bring back the relics of a the first Catholic bishop, Pompelia. You know this, Mokor, because when you were at Pompelia, you would go there. The road there. You ever driven down that road? My kids have, we have vigil mass there every Saturday night. Because that's the tikama, that's the way we've been brought up. So that place, so we cannot even make this place, Motiti, a pilgrim, like a place of 
uh, where people can go and visit, like they do all over the world. <coughs> all over the world can't do that to Mutichi because they pop them. Your vehicles will just break down. Oh. So let's just let's just um, take and you know, and then it continues out to Matihiti, all the way out to the Arco. The roads are terrible. But you know, why? Why do we have to continue to put up with this? Why should we? I'm sure if not, I'm sure we've contributed to the economic infrastructure of this country. I certainly, you know, I have check my tax. You know, so I just said, why? It's so inequitable. So inequitable. Um, and then the impacts, I, yeah, this impacts, so the roads, impacts heavily on our people who are unwell um, and our children, our komatua, who have to put up with poor road conditions, rough slips. And then we have the runa runa road, the road going to, to uh, Kaitaia, our main connect, um, connecting road to, to Kaitaia. Oh, <clears throat> even that. I remember when... Um, Barry Ray was on the council. Um, Felicity Foy, I remember when Murray Ray, he's passed on now, and he would come out to Mitsumiti to Wairea to, to hunt. And then when he, just before he died, he kept on saying to me, Mana, the runa runa road, it has to be done up. I said, mate, you're the one who sits in council. Please, yeah. Mati, yeah. So, you know, they still that, we're still here. We're still asking for all of that. And then the last one, Moko, in terms of the seal, the ceiling from um, the tassel from the bridge, from the bridge that's to Haturimu. Now let's talk about that bridge. It must be the only bridge in the whole of the north that has got chicken wire <laughs> on the side of it. And, and, and the ends of it have been knocked off by a vehicle that's obviously higher than the bridge. You know, like, I, honestly, I drive around, when I drive around, and I drive around a lot, when I drive around, I look at all the bridges, I go, yeah, yeah, no, I haven't found another bridge with chicken wire. <laughs> There's no other bridge with chicken wire here? Okay, must be just at home. And so I say to myself, and then you're going to seal from there to Hatoremi Hill. What's, why is that? How come you can't keep on going further? Why is that? Like based on your matrix, based on your prioritization tool, come back to us, ask us, ask us. We will help you write the plan. Our people will help you write the plan. You know, and don't give us a few days, you know, give us weeks like you have, years like you have. Some of the data that I've been reading to collect my call for today, Go school all the way back to 2018, 2019, those reports. Mm. Even, you know, and so I'm thinking to myself, oh, eh, 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 eh. So my last slide is, I've got my last slide, no, no. my last call rule is, how do we know all this? Why, what, mana, five mana, when you're putting this together, what is the call rule before you? What is the call rule of Orato Ma? Those pawariki that aren't here today. Kahina re teit, writes a wayata proudly. No mai ki te puna i te ao marama. Come to the place, the, the puna, the spring of the world of light. Abraham Awitana writes a wayata, a motete, a pole, called tu moke moke ana, a pangru, a papata. That period of time that event, he talks about the great urbanization of our people as they sought Kaingarua. They were leaving their Kaingatahi to go to Kaingarua. And how sad that was. Joe Cooper at the Deedle Settlement in 2014 wrote a waiata around, thank you, Te Kawana. Thank you for this, but hang on. You've still got lots more to give us back. And Tera Matua, who just passed last year, that was that was one of his closing words to me was, Mana, we haven't quite finished yet. I said, Oh, Uncle, don't look at just me. <laughs> but however, yeah, I'm here today because of them, my <laughs> Pawariki that have gone before me. 
that have gone before us. <clears throat> and then, so yeah, Abrahama, Joe Cooper, Uncle Joe, and Pa Henare, who have all fought for our people. I stand here, he uri a hau no rata, a huri rauna, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kura tātou katoa. Mā tūnu, tēnā mātā, pōhia mā te moana, pā kura pā te rohe, Nga tīmana wā te wāku Nga tīmana wā te wāku Tēnā koe, tēnā koe te katoa Wait now our final deputation for today's Te Koko Transport Committee meeting is Matsuo Graham Morale, uh, who will be speaking regarding North Okeanga roads along with the Kaimatsu. We are from home and it's to support Uncle Graham. I'm happy to pass the time over to you. Kia ora, tēnā koe. Ko keri ama tēnei. I'm a morale lei, but I come from the Oroki lei. I'll keep mine short and sweet because the Wahini Tor's done most of it for us. So I'll cut straight to the chase, eh? What's going on with our roads and the way in which we have been reported back to for us? I'm here on behalf of Te, Raka, uh, te Whakarapa Te Hawaru, and I'm also here as the Hiamana of Te Puna Tōpū o Hokianga. That trust is a forestry trust. We transport and have held back on transporting our timber because of the conditions of these roads. You said, Moko, we're limited because of the Ture. From us as Tikarapa, we also are operating under the Ture. The Ture is the 1962 Māori development. There are certain things that need to be taken care of, which relates to one, educational well-being of Tangata Whenua, two, economic growth of Tangata Whenua, and three, social development of Tangata Whenua. Okay. I have seen for the very short period of time that I moved home, but still had 40 years of coming home, of absolute rubbish, absolute bureaucracy working at its purest. I'm going to get into trouble by saying this. Because of your inaction, I will take action for what Minna has just said for our people. I get into trouble, Katie Pine. Come and see me. If I don't get into trouble, you pay me. I've got sitting here probably a hundred years, at least 80 years of experience in roading. And here we are getting messages from NTA clearly saying we've done a review, we've done the geological reports, we've done this, we've done mm -hmm. that. My goodness, my yeah. head because what happens is they've all got to be peer reviewed. But it's made it quite clear. If you come to see us about peer reviewing, you haven't. So we want to ensure we have two things, meaningful input and meaningful participation, as that word she put up there, tangata whenua. I don't know how good of advice you've got, but we've got some good counsellors in here. We've got people here that want to try and help us, but are stifled by the bureaucracy. And one of the key things, I've got to say this while I'm here, my time's limited, I'm down to seven minutes now, <laughs> is that NTA has done nothing for us in North Hokianga, and I know they're responsible. Yeah, yeah. With, it needs to be tidied up. Because I will take drastic action. That drastic action you will not like. That drastic action... I'll get support from you, whether you like it or not. Pōha. 
Paul Hart coming in and talking about this. 2020, this slip at Motati happened. Four years? Four years of us waiting? Oh, because the NTA takes care of all the road and stuff. Oh, we only allocated X amount. You need to sort out what you can do for us. And you need to do it now, not tomorrow. I also want to bring up that what we'd like to do is you need, you need to actually look, and I'm going to request this from the council at this meeting. I want a document review of our bridges from the integrity group that was done 38 years ago. I've not been waiting four years for more to tea, but we've been waiting 38 years for a bridge. I'm prepared to go to the community and talk to them. I'm prepared to try and help with getting the funding for it. I know we'll get the support because of the tool in which we operate under. So there's one thing you haven't done, is ask us for help. We're willing to help. Good on you, Steve. Thank you from a councillor's perspective of coming and seeing the roads. Everyone can Google map roads. Everyone can go in and see from uh, whatever you call it from the sky. Get on my road. Come and have a look. I get an answer for what I asked at the road in uh, regional bit in Opo. They'll send me an update. The update's brilliant. You know what happened? Oh, we've got access for you to go through Runa Runa Road. I'll ask each and every one of you, you come and you go on that Runa Runa Road when I send six logging trucks through there. Let's see how you like it. Oh, by the way, Runa Runa Road down in Pungaru, it says danger to heavy vehicles. Yes. And you want me to use that as an alternative route for my economic growth, for my social growth, for my educational growth? You're dreaming, boys and girls. You're dreaming. I just want to make it clear that nothing has been done. People are trying to help us to get it done. Now we're taking through our committee action to get it done. Come on. Good luck. Well, the document review is quite keen for me. I want to see what the submissions were on that bridging project from 38 years ago. You must have archives. I'll take that up. I believe it was done. And there was one chap in there, Steve Gibson, from the bridging group, the Integrity Bridging Group, that done a damn good report to justify us North Hokianga having a bridge to get access to the south. Even though it is only Tahiki, that's something. I know you're going to have a review on the car period within the next three years. When we have a mucky over on the north side, we've got to go and pay for a car ferry to take all the Alfano over after eight o'clock at night. And we could turn up at midnight. And those that we have any coming down on the south side, our people go over from the north side to Tokoko, and then nothing. They can't get back till the next day, and yet they've got other things to do too. So I'm just a little bit um, frustrated, I think, for the word's sake. How do we get about going, I need to ask this group to consider when we get out of here, I want consent from you. I want from consent from you because I'm going to take a big D65 bully up the road and I'm going to cut my own road because you fellas done nothing. And I want you to find me some money for it. If you don't, I'm going to do it. We at the Punatoku Hokianga have been operating for 52 years. We've only just had it back from being oppressed back in our hands again after 52 years. So we need to move forward. So that's entirely up to you. If you have any questions, I've got three minutes. Where are you going? Kia ora koutou. Kia ora koutou. Tēnā koe. Tēnā koutou Happy to open the floor to any questions from members. <clears throat> yeah, I, I have a question. Thanks. For, thanks for the for Great. Thank you, Fire. Thank you. I think it's brilliant. And um, and I can understand your frustration. I think I've been saying things need to be done as well. Uh, just just so there's a ask you a question. So one of the key things, and I think it's been missed, and I don't know who to, who to answer this, but I remember when Partake died. I think I went to that funeral, and there were thousands of people that came. It seemed like it. The roads were blocked and everything else. Um, 
when they when we look at the traffic on the road, you need to take all of those things in. There's the logging trucks, there's the school routes, there's all those things, and there's a road, by the way, which says heavy vehicles not allowed, school bus route. Now you figure that out. You know, there's funny things that go on there. Why send kids down a roof? Anyway, so so I, I so put all those factors in there, please. So in counter all up, and so I 100 percent agree. Locals do know what's going on, do know the traffic, and they do know issues like not being able to get back. Um, so we need to follow that up somehow if we can get that detail and get involved. I like the corridor because I, mean, I, I, I believe local people can make a significant difference and that connection needs to happen. So I don't know if that's a question there. But just one other just comment, um, and you may not know this, the economic benefit and well-being uh, that comes out of it should be included too in those arguments, which we can help with. And to give you an example, the place that has the highest GDP per capita, and New Zealand has got a very low GDP per capita, as you would know, if you came from overseas. And the place that's got the highest GDP per capita is Taiko Ogega. Second highest is Tehiku. And third is Kirikiri. So you are providing you know, good through the forestry, through the various other things to the New Zealand world you know, return. So those roads are not fit for purpose, for sure. Thank you. Question um, of Graham in, in five minutes is uh, I very much picked up on um, the fact that this council, our uh, government agencies and organisations have not included locals as a part of the, any of the conversations from the start. And I know we come out for consultation, we've got long term plan consultations starting next week. So please, even though I'm telling you today and it's next week, it's opening for a month. Like we need you to also submit to those to give us the formal steer on what you're requesting. But I picked up on the fact that we haven't actually involved you in the conversation. Um, and so if, if I was to set up a North Hokianga Roading Working Group as a working group of this committee, um, which would allow me to formally appoint members of the community to be a part of that, and so you're a part of the inner workings of the conversations in this study. Would you be open to yeah. putting up? Or or us. To have a I'm just trying to figure out how do where do we start? Otherwise, I nod my head and I completely agree with you. You leave this room, and then we're still back at the same spot. So, how do I, um, in the power that I have as the chair of this committee, or as the mayor? Where do we actually start? And maybe a joint working group is a starting point so that we have uh, one, uh, we have administrative um, support, support from our council staff. Two, it gives you a leg to stand on with um, in terms of attending and being able to vote and things such as, and a little bit of a, uh, in a under the bonnet look at what we also have to deal with in the decision we have to here. So I'm wondering if I was to stand one up, if you would be willing to help me with the, how many should we have in the community? Who is the best place to be from the community to represent the community within that working group or something to that effect? Absolutely. I think that's, the, that's exactly what we've come for today. It's about no, it's partnerships. I listen to my niece, you know, and I've seen and I've heard those stories. And actually, we're getting sick and tired of it. The narrative doesn't change, but somehow, rather, the way that we write it seems we want it want to be different. The lyrics are somewhat different, same story. I want to say that really today for me is about sort of coming together, John, working with you, working with you, Steve, the councillors, in partnership. We want to contribute. Why would you contribute? Because my niece said, we are the one of England. It's a responsibility that we have inherited. We also believe that really we do have capacity, capability, and technology around some of these areas. But the advice of council is important because you have to work under the Turi. I work under the Turi, Maori Community Development Act, and the 1955 Trust Boards Act, like it or not. They always sort of say, let the law fight the law. Well, right. Sir Graham and I knew what happened then. The Crown ended up in court and they lost. We don't even want to go to that. This Steve is about partnership. Hita, Mima Hitahi, 
cut out. I don't like to spend my time, but we'll collaborate. And I think it's our responsibility to establish this committee along with what Minna has done and get these people in place as a working group on the ground to make things happen. Right now, I note that winter's coming up. I'm home at least twice a month. They never take another position back home because I don't live there. They live there. I live in Moidua. So I'm only just a, a, a spectator, I suppose, and traveling on those roads, but I know them. I was brought up there. Came back there in the late 40s and 50s. Just to come to a conclusion on this, I think today is about doing it. I understand that right now we need to do something. For me, mm -hmm. remedy is important, but there are phases and phases of remedy. Right now, that current situation, what's the injunction, and of course, Naareta, cannot continue for the winter. So there has to be some remedial action done there. I think that probably could be the first priority, or annals, but at least I see those two as being now. That is working to set up. So I want to conclude by simply saying, Thank you very much for this opportunity for us to work in partnership, Steve, to work together, to contribute to what we consider is also our mana whenua responsibility. We are the people of the land. We've got a responsibility for that. The second phase, I've already done some survey about that. That's another expensive phase. We're not going to go there because it goes into private land. But nevertheless, I know of Fano. They will say to correct these roads, you may go on. I don't think so. That's a good idea either. I think you pay for what they need is to ensure that the infrastructure and the roading at, in the Hokianga or Brunaruna Road is up to standard. So, in saying that anyway, I want to say Tinakuita. Tinakuita. We're here because we are the Maori Committee behind ground. And our job is to make things happen. I'm a person of action. I don't really want to waste my time. We, we know doing. It's about getting things done, Steve. But get it done with the right framework, with the right people, and of course the budgetary requirements to allow these things to happen. You mentioned some of those. It's good to come here today, John, to see you again. Have some of those discussions we've had in the past, and to continue those. And to you, Tokumoho, Nunga Kamira, Tinawai, Matikiti, Titayao, Koto Wenda, Noreda, Emihetana Kyakota Gato, Motenewa, Kitoko Helmana, Kitoko Kumichi Hoki Konei, Mekwe Hoki Mina, we will join forces. We don't want to come in isolation. We want to come together. I come from a military background. You all go to war together, not some tomorrow and some coming next week. We go together. And that's is really the kaupapa and the kawa of Fakarapa, and that is the kawa really of Ngati Manawa Kaitutai Waila. Nurida Kyakoto Katoa, Tinakuta, Tinakuta, Yorakuta, Tinakuta. I want to um, bring up about the prayer that you said. You do like the chika the pono. I'm glad that you have that in your prayer. Tika mete pono. You know, when you say a prayer, tika mete pono, be pono with, with us. Uh, I want to talk about what Mina has presented to you this morning. I remember when, when the unveiling of my mother's, the monument at Pangaru, when we had the past, um, uh, the uh, Jacinda Ardern, our past um, Prime Minister, she actually saw the roads were no good. And that time, we hadn't had the slip that, that time either, but she saw the roads weren't really good. So um, I'm going to be a good friend of that man there. Sure. You know, I, I, I've got a nice... Um, my thing with Panguru, and Mina's right, we know who comes in and who don't come in. Yeah. I stopped the police one day, and I, this is my courier to him, have I invited you here? Mm -hmm. 
All you're doing is coming in here and taking away our young people. You come to my, my community of Pangaru, we will welcome you. We want to know who comes into Pangaru and who leaves. The other thing that I've got a real thing about, because I was, um, I made some submissions on our foreshore. And I'm hoha, and I think our community are hoha, with this thing, resource consents. Resource consents. Resource to take, to take water out of our own maunga. You know, to, to take water out of our own maunga, to take the metal out of our own creek, whakarapa. Why do we have to have all this red tape to come to you or the regional council and say, look, we want a water to be running to our community? Because me, I was part, I was 25 years as a trustee to my marae, <laughs> but we were sent a big fat bill from the council for this resource consent. You know, stop doing that to us. We do the mahi, we put the water out, we do the hard work, and then the council sends us a bill. Stop doing that. Because, you know, we, I will protest. I will oppose you. You know, in sending, we own our Mongol Tanguru. You don't. We own our creek. We are our creek of Pakarapa. So all of us, all of us here, I was born and brought up in Panguru by some good parents, good people, good kaumata. Now, what's happened? The council is saying to you, you pay this, you pay that. I might as well tell them we can't pay you. So, you know, I've worked hard with our marae of the Puno Te Maramat, but you be fair to us. I remember your community board came over to Pangaru once in that day, which was good. They saw what was going on in Pangaru and our six communities. Do you know Pangaru is the highway? Highway to these communities. So our roads need to be spot on. I really don't understand. I, I just can't with our tamariki on buses. They must have a hell of a ride on those buses. And the dust that goes there. You know, I'm really right on the tar seal area and I have the buses and the trucks that go up and down. And the thing, if, just imagine those cars that go to, to Kaitaia. It takes us one hour to get to Kaitaia the roads are terrible. Terrible. But I want to say to you, I come here today, that man there is going to be our best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and all I want you to say, Mayor, Mayor, I. I. <laughs> Don't say Carl. <laughs> because he's going to do some work for us. <laughs> and I congratulate you, the Mayor, especially. And whoever's listening out there, support the mayor on this new committee. Oh, right. And I want to totoko that our lady Mina is what there. She will be our eyes there. <laughs> Norena a Kota Hilda Tenna Kota. I've worked with Hilda for years. We've been on Fafai, but Norena Tenna Tatika. Just while um, Mayor Moko gathers his breath and his thoughts after that, I'd, um, thank you for coming in. Thank you, Fire Minna, and the um, rest of you, all the events, Graham, Dick, for your crew. I've been um, <laughs> fighting on your behalf to get there, <coughs> but we have processes that we have to follow. I'm not going to defend anyone, but um, you being here assists me in my narrative when I go back in the Thanks for coming. Oh One final question before you stand up, Mayor. Remember, you are the mayor of our district, but he is our 
various is there's a party and everything from Norfolk Younger. When are you going to get committee going, bro? Um, tomorrow. 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 Probably um, organize a so we'll catch up with you to work out the terms of reference, but we'll formally establish it at our next. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't want to be told it's going to, you're going to do something and I'm waiting six months. Oh, we'll, we'll start straight away, but it'll formally get set up. I have to talk to the girls. Go ahead. Right, yes. Just in terms of the, um, reaching the equitable outcomes, for our people, I've been here before where I've been part of the roading, where we uh, the road was raised and we had the engineers and we, and we had lots of consultation, um, probably to the point where we were a little bit insulted because we've always been told how to do things. I'm just thinking about the tomorrow, about my students and the next generation of, I don't really know the, the this beast, this, the, the council beast, the machinations of the council. But I do know that ehikama, we need to be inclusive and thinking of the tomorrow. Otherwise, we come back here for the next taki. Uh, you know, um, last time was the roads. This time is the roads. Tomorrow, what's it going to be? The water. Hey, you know what I mean? It just keeps on going and going. And I just want you to to think and consider having a closer relationship with Hokkaido. In our areas, uh, uh, you know, if there isn't anything in your in your tool or your matrix of how you, how you work with Okaina, there needs to be a e, e, e koto, koto kunga ni mari. There needs to be. We need to be doing this a bit better instead of you had a maya mina metaku deputation. You had a you know, there needs to be another another uh, a way of doing it. The responsible service, the RFS, and all that. You know, nothing has evolved. You haven't evolved from your in your your processes. They haven't evolved, and yet we have. So yeah, just to consider. It. You know, you know. Um, <laughs> um, to find out here to 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 me to to Kua haere i tawhiti uh, ki te hui hui tahi ai ki a mātou o tēnei komiti mō ngā rori, te komiti o te koukou. Um, ko pau te pau marika te taima i a tātou i te reo Māori, ngari i te reo Pākehā. Can someone fix that pot, please, because I think that we just went a little bit over time. Um, we do have the rest of a formal meeting that we are going to try and squeeze in for the rest of this, but I hugely appreciate your deputation. It has not fallen on death ears today. And um, I'll be following up afterwards um, with Faimana and uh, Uncle Graham as your mama who spoke on your behalf today. Um, I might ask if one of our members could help see you out and farewell you. Otherwise, uh, I'll carry on with the rest of that one. Steve? Just make sure you're there. See you. See you. Yes. 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 Item 4.1, the confirmation of previous minutes that I will so move. I'll second that. Moved by Councillor Vucic. Councillor Vucic, if we pick up the minutes that needed addressing. Hands up from anyone online or in the room? Yeah, All I right. do, Michael. Do you want to, Councillor Radic? Uh, in the minutes last, the last um, roading council meeting, I asked a question and I was I directed to Gavin Thomas yeah. on why the ceiling of 6.5 kilometres on rural road is being is being sealed. Because I wanted to compare that road with Gills Road, Spones <laughs> Road, Dicksmith Loop Road, Otaru have more important significance. And I didn't get a response. 
So to you, Gavin, I don't know if you're there. I need okay. to, or whoever it is in NTA, I need a report on why Rural Road, 6.5 kilometres, is being sealed. What metric system was used? We need to remember that there have been roads being sealed over the metric system over the years that should never have been sealed. So I want to know by the end of this week. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Um, what I'll do is... Mr. Mayor, those roads were set three years in advance and it should not be a surprise to Councillor Radish. He should read the paperwork, I'm sorry, but we should not be apologising for this. Sorry, just give me the bit. information, uh, Mayor Moko. Just Thank you, I'll hand you both the information. Thank you. I really need your help. If you're online, you need to let me cheer from in here. So if you'd like to speak, please put your hand up and the girls will know that pass it on to me and then I'll pass that to you. And otherwise, it is just way too hard to try and chair a hybrid meeting with people virtual and people in person at you. Uh, Councillor Radich, your note from the Minister, we'll just note this down and I'm going to ask Calvin to just give you a call to follow up on that, please. Um, Councillor Foy quite noted about that, but we'll leave that for Calvin and Councillor Radich to have a follow up with the board over. Um, I haven't had any further indications that there's anything needing fixing up from the minutes. So we'll put that to a vote. All those in favour say aye. Those opposed or abstentions, that is carried. We will now go to item 5.1 on page 14, which is uh, to note the reports from members Court and Ali as our principal. I just want to acknowledge that you've joined us in the room now. Yeah. Um, well, we also have uh, RTC report tabled by Councillor Lee for today, which you should have in front of you. Um, I'm happy to move. That was seconded by Councillor Musich. We'll pass over to Councillor Court and Councillor McNally to give updates. Um, I did send an email this morning saying that my members reporting items 5.3 and 5.4 actually supply those documents. But cheeky of the staff to take the credit for that. <coughs> I have nothing else to add. Thank you, Councillor Court. We look forward to your um, discussion points when we get to those items as well, Councillor McNally. Yeah, there's a I've provided a report in the room, but the, um, I'll be presenting this next week, and it's the guts of it is just really pleasing to see changes to the government policy statement and that more accurately reflect the nationwide rural and provincial council views, and um, particularly the shortfall in, shortfall in the funding model, which Anne's been pushing for for a while, and the changes, looks like changes to the spending, spending priority. The back to basics approach, the Regional Transport Committee and NTA have moved on our regional land transport plan to ensure that what we are asking for aligns fairly well with this GPS as it's come out from the new minister. It's still a draft, of course, so there's nothing guaranteed. Um, and I just think that as a road controlling authority, this council, we need to move at pace to implement any changes, just to make sure that we can actually get the spend in the right place, particularly on that um, drainage works. And if we get the drainage and the reseal component right, we should be able to reduce the road failures by um, deterioration. Talking to um, a number of road users and the contractors themselves, I spoke to the, ran into a, um, one of the Ventia fellows last week, and um, he was just saying that they're struggling to rework some areas of our roads because the running course or the the layers that are over top of the base metal, there's not a lot there to rework. And one of those is, is um, Otao Road, where there's still some logging trucks coming out of there, I think. And so they're pulling up a lot of heavy metal when they grade it. And I've seen it in other places around the network and um, actually kicked a couple of the big rocks back into the drain. Uh, so I didn't wreck my own tire, let alone whoever else was coming along. Um, traffic management, that's 
in the in one of the reports that Anne's included here, she can bring that up. The minister has noted the cost of traffic management, and they're looking to take it back to a more risk-based approach than uh, probably what is best practice. And then um, we've we've received a review back on the on a report on the way the current system is working, and that CEs are dealing with that. Um, that's all from me at the moment. Thank you, uh, Councillor Wilson. Uh -huh. Thank, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Mayor. I did have some questions on Steve's report. Thank you, Steve. I think it's excellent, and I think you hit on some of the key things that that were worrying me and, and complaints that have come back. What I've noticed is the as well coming through is the rocks and the large rocks coming through there. Greater can't really we work work at it. But to me, that indicates that there's been erosion over time in the maintenance contracts. So there's a bigger issue that needs, and I know I've said this before, it's a bigger issue that needs to be looked at and worked at. So the maintenance is actually maintaining that road at a specific level. And I wonder with the new contracts, when the time does come, that we do look at an incentive to increase the, you know, the, um, the, the road condition gives us an incentive which will reduce the maintenance cost and also if it's a decreasing it'll be a penalty. I think that's something that uh, this council actually had in 2006 in its contract. And likewise the traffic management has been a number of comments being made to me that they don't see people working um, on the road so do keep an eye on that and probably keep information back to us really that that is that is sufficient perspective. Thank you, Councillor Vestich. Happy to open up for that and if any further queries from members. Yes, you're there. Councillor Radich. Yeah, just in regard to um, Steve McNally's report. Now, Steve, you've heard the people from Pangaroo and you've heard Paula come up here. And you've also heard from me about the condition of our roads. And I now turn towards you and Ann Court. What are you two doing about it? It's you know, you that's your portfolio. What are you doing about it? There's all these RFSs coming through and everything like that. And we just sit back like dead ducks and do nothing. So what are you two? You know, I'd like to you two to come up to, to Hicker Ward and I'll take you around and show you the roads. You know, that's your portfolio. What are you doing about it? I'm up there quite frequently, Matty, but thanks for the um, thing. I'm well aware of the road conditions. It's not just in Tihiku. It's right across the southern area. It's right across the Hoki Hanger. I've driven a shipload of them, and they're all in poor condition. The people this morning, they actually told us that I'd been out there and thanked me for it. So um, what are we doing about it? If we look at the, um, the funding model, that was one that changed at the government policy statement level or that what we worked at because there's a we need to change the spending priorities so we get to focus on drainage clearing culverts and remeddling of unsealed roads the contractors and the exactly what we have to do to fix it but the current funding buckets the way it's set up under the gps and our national uh, northern land transport funding model we don't have sufficient money in those various areas so i'll take on your challenge any day of the week <clears throat> the problem is, Steve, the problem is that um, it's the maintenance on the roads by Fulton Hogan and MTA. Um, just recently, Lambs Road was um, graded. I go up Lambs Road three times a week to pick up produce. And I said to myself, why was this road to graded? The corrugation on it is very small indeed. So I got onto Fulton Hogan and I asked him, you know what their response was? Oh, where Grader was coming back from the far north, so we decided to Grader Lambs Road. How's that for that? And just up the road is Kimberley Road, which is atrocious. I had to do a catering job for a wedding there two weeks ago. And my whole evening was spoiled by people approaching me and saying about the road. I said to them, I can't help you. That's the problem, Steve. Fulton Hogan and NTA. Councillor Radich, I just ask that you are mindful of the 
types of questions you ask during this committee meeting and I don't expect any members to unduly put pressure on any other members within the meeting or on our contractors. Now, one of the things I can say to this point before we go to Councillor Foy is absolutely appreciate and also share your frustrations. But I do believe that we as a council and as a committee and with our uh, portfolio holders are uh, setting ourselves up for success by lining our ducks up in a row within the limitations we have of legislation and process so that we will do better for our people. But I appreciate that, Councillor Foy. I'm not putting the pressure on um, Steve McNally or anyone, Mayor Mockle. All I'm saying is that Fulton Hogan and NTA are fleecing us. Councillor Thank you, Mayor Mokko. And I'm trying my best. I'll, I'll only speak when I raise my hand to enable... Thank you for that. I appreciate it. ...to chair the meeting. Um, and thank you to Anne and Steve uh, for your work. And uh, I personally have had... Um, always had a response from Steve. In fact, he's visited each of the roads that have been raised here in Taku. So I think... Um, Anne and Steve both for your work in that area. Uh, in terms of going forward, uh, I think that we need to talk about the solutions and I uh, totally support uh, Steve's comments about changing and advocating for the change of the GPS about drainage, um, base core strengthening and reseals. I would, however, like to ask Steve and Anne uh, and also to table to our fellow elected members here that we do have unsubsidised works within our grasp as elected members. We have done unsubsidised debt ceiling in the past and we could do unsubsidised fixing of the base course of our roads, which could, as an example, we could choose to do that and have five times as much roads fixed for the drainage, the base course, the whole thing like Kaipara has done instead of our, uh, our road ceiling. We can do five times as much work for that funding. And we are doing our long-term plan at the moment. I'd just like to hear from uh, from Steve and Anne about doing unsubsidised uh, fixing of the base course, so the Centre of Excellence of Rural Roads, uh, and that discussion about doing it unsubsidised as part of our long-term plan. Um, I'm sure it'll come up in the deliberations as well. But to just table that and what other councils are doing to fix the huge backlog we have with our unsealed roads. Thanks, Felicity. The um, yeah, the centre of excellent upgrades. The NTA staff and contractors both know exactly how to do it and what is needed to be done. We just need to be very careful on prioritising that work so we target the areas that are worse. Um, first, the budget that's been the um. The transport plan that's out for submission shortly, that actually has some of those exact things in it and there's staff here, but I'll let Anne, Anne's been championing this for a fair while regarding the funding of it. I really know how to answer that question to be fair. I can tell Councillor Foy and hopefully it gives Councillor Radich some comfort. Is that I'm not sitting at home moaning about the roads. My beautiful new car now has 34,000 kilometres on the clock. I've driven to Wellington twice at my own time and my own cost. I've gone to Napier. I've used every single opportunity that I have in my handbasket to get in front of the minister, the Ministry of Transport. Anybody who has a say in how the land transport task is funded, uh, putting forward a case for Northland. I have just completed a submission on the government policy statements, my own submission. Um, why I need, why I'm asking the government to elevate Northland's transport times above others in the plan. Um, I think the debate around the levels of service on the road is one for the contract, and it is one that we've applied for funding for through the Regional Land Transport Plan. So submissions and support of the work that Steve and others have done would 
be beneficial. We need to then send that off to Wellington for it to be considered. So any opportunity anybody gets to talk to a minister or somebody in a position of influence to champion our need up here should not be left to two portfolio holders. It needs to be a regional voice, a consistent regional voice. Steve and I will do what we can, but we can't perform miracles. I don't have any other answer for that, Michael, but I do have a question for Councillor McNally. It's more a question for the room, and it's for your final sentence, Councillor McNally. And I'm concerned that when we attended the in committee session in Wellington, uh, on last week, sorry, we were told that there were no reports. And when we asked to see those reports, we were told that they would go to the CEOs, not the elected members. I think it's really important that you're asking for those reports. It's really important that all elected members have the full picture. Is there anything we can be doing to support you to ensure that the full reports come to all elected members? It'll be more us happy to respond to that. Um, just through the chair. Um, my understanding is the general managers and the CEOs are working on consolidating the full reports and providing that information as part of the plan workshops that are happening with each council. So they need to be provided as part of that first. Can I just respond to that? My concern is when a report is consolidated, what's missing is it? It's very, it, it scares me that there's a need, that there seems to be a perception that there's a need that we need to get a sanitised version of the report. I don't want a sanitised version of the report. I need a what and we need it my governance role so I can sit here and make the right decision. And I wonder if we need to look over it and what legal grounds there are to withhold. And you might want to take that conversation offline because I am mindful that we're live streaming. But I just want to use this opportunity to express my concern. Yeah, I'll be bringing it up at the Regional Transport Committee next week. And um, I accept Calvin's explanation. It is it, the C is handling it, and we'll get the response in due course. I think we'll work, I'll work with our chief executive to ensure that um, we have the full documentation so we can be well informed, fully informed around decisions that we need to make. To you both, to you both, I will put that to uh, vote all in favour say ayes. Ayes. Opposed or abstentions? The motion is carried. We now go to item 5.2, the final district council transportation activity update, January 2024 operations report. I can get a move for that, please. I mean, thank you, Councillor McNally. Yes. Seconder. I'll second. Councillor Lucic. Uh, before I pass over to you both, Calvin, as the author of this report, was there anything that you wanted to highlight? Uh, or happy to take questions and take it as read? I just will highlight a couple of things about the SLIP program. Doing so I can share my screen. Um, so just confirming that yesterday the GIS SLIP repair map went live um, on FNDC's website. Um, so this is the map that outlines the Remaining 22, 23 emergency works um, as of November 23. So it doesn't show all the ones that were completed prior to that. Um, the key for that is the um, blue dots of the phase two sites. Um, the majority of those sites are now with the contractors, their program for delivery between now and the end of the financial year. Um, six of those sites for example were physically completed in the last two weeks um, so they will be updated and revert to the new color when you click on any of these sites pick up a lot one for us they're all fine are they so that's a fine for most of these but it was at the most piece like that four years in the waiting um so just to clarify um i need to confirm the lot to Multi-team one because our records have it at 2022. Um, 
but also just to clarify that as well, this is solely emergency works program slips. There are hundreds of historical slips mm -hmm. that aren't covered in this GIS map. Right. Um, this is about the emergency works program. If I just click on the this is um, for each site, you get a description of when it is. Um, and currently the estimate for the phase three ones is estimated com um, completion times. Um, we, as we get through the process of updating information, they will be updated with a quarter and a, a year of when those slips are going to be produced. Um, so if you look at a... Sorry. Um, this one is quarter two, autumn 2024. So there are a number of slips around the region that you'll see uh, the district that have been done. So both Kaipa and Whangarei have their own versions of the same map. Um, so it's just encourage you to get that out there. It was released yesterday. Um, and basically, it up as we complete the status or update the status within the room, it updates overnight with the new status of any, any time or anything else. Um, with the phase three sites, um, the Wangaro and West Coast Road public uh, both the construction tender has been finalised for release the market in the next week or so. So that will be out shortly. The peer review on the major slip has been completed. Um, and has identified no major changes. So we're working on finalising the tender documents for that one now to get out to tender in the next week or two as well, I believe. Um, we will work with the community on the temporary options that were raised today. Um, however, noting that when we have looked at the ones that were previously proposed, we had WSP go out and identify that um, survey the retreat options, and there is another slip face on the other side that sits there. Um, so we we do need to actually work through and make sure we're not creating another issue with temporary options. Um, the investigation and design packages are, have been awarded for two slips on Wainui Road, um, and there's about seven or eight other sites that are in there, and then there's a further. The remaining phase three sites are being packaged at present to go up for tender for design and investigation. Um, probably the other little thing to point out, um, just the volume of works that's been completed in the first six months. Um, so yeah, 33% increase on the same period of 23, 23 in terms of the volume of work that's been done. And that's all I've got. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor McNally, move on. Um, yeah, thanks for the report. It's just, there was one note I had in here and it's on the bottom of page 21 and it relates to um, staff working with the finance, farm finance team to complete the forecasting of the program to inform like we carry forward values for the long term. I'm just wondering what um, timeline are we looking at to receive that? And on the next two pages, two or three, three pages, there's a list of the works and there's projects on hold or project deferred in the future. So I guess they're all carry forwards. It's, um, it impacts on what we can do next year. That's all. I just wondering we're going to get that figure back. Through, through the chair, I believe those meetings have already been happening. I understand it's all the um, finalisation of LTP finances and that occurs in early April. Um, so just confirming as a minimum, the 1.5 million of red status reports, the ones you've highlighted that are on hold, um, are identified as carry forwards. Um, and then as a portion of the oranges. But that work's been, those meetings and that work has been done at the moment to inform the, the total financial report back to council. Yes. Yeah, and then there was the uh, zero and some other uh, street management stuff, which doesn't look like it's in there, but that looks like the minister's going to fund that anyway. Just to clarify, if it's within this current year's program, it is already funded. All oh, right. Yeah. Still with Gary Ford. What's it in the back next year if it's been withdrawn? Thank you, Councillor Vistage. 
on page 21 um, of looking at the capital and renewal program graph, which shows um, drop below the forecast. What is the final year going to look like? Is, is, is that going to be cool? Is there going to be a catch up or um, going to be under delivery? So, through the chair, we're presently forecasting a catch up. Um, that December invoicing period was only a two week invoicing period, but the forecast was for the full month. We for a catch up invoice in January already that you'll see in the next month's report. So, we believe we're still on track to uh, forecast. Thank you. And there's projects you highlighted in red, and I just note, note a few which is on the page. D4, which is the Kaiko uh, footpaths project, which are all got red dots beside and said there's uh, only this description is here on it's yeah, you see the Kaiko footpaths it's pretty much all of them have got a red dot saying in design, so that's at risk in delivery. I know the community board would be disappointed if you need something on that. I'll see if Greg is on the line. Yes, sorry. Yes, I'm here. Um, I, I will go through and I can update. I just was following this meeting of exactly what gets delivered. There's a number of paths in there that were part of the program that are specifically designed only this year um, due to, I suppose, parts of the costs of um, the, I suppose, the prioritization of the number one foot pass coming through. So it's, um, yeah, we've just got the cost back for that. So we're finalizing. Um, what we can actually deliver on what we can't in the next couple of days with that. Um, so yeah, so it's, I, I can come back at a further date and just confirm exactly which ones are the designs and for future years and which ones are then confirmed in for this year. Just further to that, Elizabeth provided a report to each of the community boards back in November and provided a further report that we've got the, the tenders back on construction. Um, but yeah, a number of them were highlighted for design only this year. Thank you. Councillor Foy. Uh, thank you, and um, thank you for providing that update uh, to our committee uh, there, Calvin. Uh, in terms of the information presented on page 27 and 26, um, it highlights the grading and then also the network uh, inspections. Uh, I just wanted to highlight uh, the lack of grading and it's been a huge amount of feedback that we've had recently that the roads aren't being graded uh, and they're in a terrible condition with lots of ruts, et cetera. Uh, yes, we know that it's summer, it's not a surprise. We know that it's dry. Uh, that shouldn't be a surprise to either council or our contractors. But what is frustrating is that we highlighted the high traffic uh, roads that will be going to coastal locations, you know, such as beaches. And these roads were only done before Christmas, but then they weren't actually inspected over that three month period. They did the inspection in November and they didn't come back until the February. And of course the road had totally degraded. And then uh, we were told that they couldn't do any work in that time because it was too dry. So I guess the frustration with this is in terms of the NTA and the methods used by the contractors, how in the new contract will we address this? Because the works aren't being done in, um, sufficiently within that high traffic period. And also in terms of the inspections being done by the contractors, they're not at a higher frequency to allow for the higher vehicle movements. Uh, and in terms of the inspections, I actually don't understand what they're inspecting. Uh, I think the scope of the inspections and what is actually outlined in the methodology for inspections is really important. And using technology to make that transparent with our ratepayers who are picking up the bill for this. Uh, if, if we could have that type of information from the NTA, I think it'll make it really apparent, you know, number one, are they inspecting the culverts and what time of the year they're doing that and number two in terms of the grading are they going to increase the number of inspections from the contractor in those high traffic times can it can there be a response about that please so through the chair i'd need to find out specifically what you're talking about because as i understand it our most our longest frequency between inspections on any road is two months 
um, with the majority of the roads being one monthly inspection. So I'll get some information off you with, with regards to the Pacific roads. Um, we did highlight in January in regards to the combination of water restrictions and dry weather um, that, that grading um, is, actually has more of a detrimental impact on unsealed roads over the summer period. We have, however, had got a, a list of roads that through inspections um, are prioritised for grading as soon as we get a the level of moisture that allows um, the, the grading to be undertaken. Um, just to give a guide, and this was explained to me the other day by some of the team, um, 10 to 15 mil of showers over a couple of days is not sufficient. What you really need to be seeing for sufficient moisture is where you have those areas of tree shade and everything else, you are seeing full moisture absorption, absorption in, the, in the aggregate. Um, that's how you can actually tell that there is sufficient in there. They have taken advantage in, in a couple of days. Um, but it does dry out very quickly. So we do have those struggles. One of the benefits of those roads that we have done the rehabilitation treatment on is they do hold together better over that over that summer period. But um, I'll follow up with this um, after this council floor with regards to the specific roads you're talking about that frequency of inspection. Uh, I've already highlighted them to Steve, but I think it just highlights that when they do an inspection, there's a full another months before anything's done about it. So that's where you'd get the three month delay. So you may be having someone inspecting it, but nothing is actually physically done for three months. Through, uh, through, through, in, through the tutors to clarify the response. Examples. I'll give you some examples. Hen, uh, Henderson Bay Road, Radua Beach Road, Matai Bay Road, Te Hapua Road. Uh, would you like some more? Any of the roads to the beaches, uh, Shipwreck Bay Hill, um, and and I think that what it's highlighting is that our contract is deficient. We used to have water watering and rolling as part of our contract to allow for this time of the year and to ensure that our roads were minimum standard. And I'd like to hear from the NTA team about including that in our new contract because you're right, you can't actually grade the road without having the moisture content and allowing for that additional infrastructure to get to a minimum standard. <laughs> through, through the chair, just to clarify, the ability to wet roll and grade is within the current contract. It is an audit works activity, um, which means it requires discretionary budget to be available from council to do that activity. Um, at the moment, the budgets that are there combined with the water restrictions on water take that we have on a number of areas of the district mean that we are not able to fund or complete that activity, um, but it does exist. Um, just to clarify as well, the response times for, um, for issues that are able to be repaired, so obviously in the dry period, if you identify grading and it is too dry to grade, you cannot do it. Um, the standard response times are within 10 days of the, of the issue being identified. So, from inspection to completion for a pothole, for example, should be 10 days. Councillor Court. Thank you, Mayor Marco. And I'd like to uh, thank Kelvin for all his uh, email traffic to me over the last few weeks around Waterfront Road at the Billboard. So what we have here is we have a a phase three, it's now being upgraded to a phase three emergency strip site. So we now have 39, not 38, that are listed on page 28 of the agenda. So my my question is, Calvin, around, um, given the sheer size of our network, uh, over 5,000 kilometres in England, um, what level of confidence have you got that we are picking up sites that have the potential to become very expensive fixes in a timely manner. So Hohora uh, um, was identified initially, but it wasn't sitting there in a phase three, but it's now become one. So are there any others out there? And do you have the resources to give you confidence that your inspectors are getting around the network in a timely manner and picking them up? 
So through, through the chair, just to clarify the process of how that became a phase three. Um, so it undertook an emergency works assessment back in August, September, and there were two repair options provided as options to pursue. Um, the initial um, lower cost repair option being the phase two um, was landed on as the preferred desirable. What that didn't take into account was the additional costs of things like the whole relocation and, and everything else. And it was only when the contractors went for buildability that they came back to us and said, actually, this is not a good use of council's money in terms of a phase two repair that's probably not going to fix it. And that is why that one's gone to phase three. Um, with respect to all the other phase two items, they're all scheduled to be completed by, July, uh, by the end of June which means we will have that kind of completion and or escalation if need be for any of those. And the phase three ones are under a regular routine uh, monitoring program while they go through, which includes monitoring for any movement or additional change in the surrounding drainage and balance. And all. So, so the answer to my question is you are confident that you've got them. I, I am confident during normal weather conditions. I am relatively confident during normal winter conditions. I would not say, given the drainage deficit we have around the network and across the this part of the region, um, in an extreme weather. Thank you. Uh, Kelvin, I've got a question. On page uh, 18, we've got highlighted there some of the great stuff there. One of the does for our road safety education program. Um, I had to catch up with them to learn about a little bit more about their work just because uh, I'm always interested, especially around the driver licensing program, and it was in our last committee update. I just wanted to ask though around the contract for road safety education for the final, because the contract ends in June. If we won't know um, the GPS is is going to change with new funding across its pockets and we won't know our funding share of that until October. So does that mean that what happens to our contract and what happens to the road safety education, which is so important between June and October? Um, just a little bit of, I don't know, a, a better understanding around what that means. Yes. The road, road safety education funding, as far as the National Road Transport Fund is concerned, as part of the continuous programs. We get an indication in May of what those budgets may look like, um, basing it on last 2021's um, process that we worked through um, with the same delays, was we came to council based on the indicative budgets and asked for an extension of contract for the six month period. Um, to allow us to confirm full funding to move into a new contract moving forward. So I would um, would be looking at a similar process. Excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, Council McNally, right of reply. Oh, sorry, I can see Belinda has got something. Uh, on page 31, on behalf of Chair Ward, who pays for the traffic management on the Waitangi Bridge on cruise ship days? So through the Chair, traffic management set up for any event including those cruise ship days with the organisers. Um, so, and I believe the cruise ship one is paid for by the local, the, the final holding, final holding to the I know it's you, but, <laughs> yeah. but it's not direct. I think it's part of the, the, uh, the cruise ship arrangement that they have with docking and those sorts of things that cover those costs, but final holding is probably in a better position after that. All right, and a uh, question from Councillor Kappa. Um, what does normal conditions? Condition? I believe you're referring to my answer to Councillor Court about slips. Um, so normal conditions are just everyday normal weather with a bit of rain, a bit of sunshine, and a bit of everything else. So nothing too extreme that right. we had this time last year. Northland four seasons in one day. Yep. Meteorologist gives us the sun with a cloud with some rain yep. and a wind yep. all at once. All right, uh, Councillor McNally, you had a reply? Probably the only thing we haven't touched on is that unless I was asleep for it, make a tea slip. Can you have an update on that? Uh, Give me our deputation this morning, please. So I provided that right at the start, sorry. So the the timeline, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. the, the construction tender being slow work to be released to market in the next four months, right? And the multi peer review has been completed. Um, 
some minor changes in that, and they're going to be working on finalising the construction tender um, as soon as that's finalised. Um, yeah. As was reported in the last meeting and subsequent to the last meeting, given the complexity of that slip, um, construction on that final repair they might start. Um, so probably the only thing then is. So we don't have um, the tearing instrument. Can we update them directly, please? Email them. Yep, so Bennett. They'll be online now, possibly. Through the chair, Bennett has been in touch with them. And as we get better yeah. progress, we'll continue to update the groups. But also, I think the, the proposed working road working group will be the mechanism for providing those updates. Oh, sorry. Can I just get one more look? We are so it's bowling there next week. Just through the chair, we are working on that. Um, what's happening and what is coming up in the North Lake region. Um, there was a, a website story released a couple of weeks ago, and Ken and the team are looking at a um, vision. I think they needed just a bit more meat on the phase three slips, yeah, <laughs> which is yep. what everyone wants to know yep. about. And it gave a lot of information about all the other stuff that. At the big thing. Um, all right, um, we'll put that to a vote. All in favor say aye. Those opposed or abstentions? Motion is carried. I'm going to ask you to turn to page uh, 62, which is our um, part of the Councillor Corp's report as portfolio holder. Um, it is for us to receive the report on the NZTA ministerial briefing note on state highway asset condition and maintenance. Councillor Court, I will note you for this move before this one. If I could have a seconder. I'll second. Councillor McNally. Councillor Court, I think I'm going to say it's you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ask for this to be included in the agenda because I think this is a critically important document that spells out the egregious state of the network and the significant challenges that the Minister and road controlling authorities have in front of them in regarding managing, maintaining and funding our assets. The the, the briefing note, while it in and of itself is a standalone document, the New Zealand Transport Agency provide monthly reports to the Minister and they are on the website. I think it would be prudent if people would get on the mailing list so that they can read them. I wouldn't make them available for every agenda because it talks to the whole of New Zealand. And we're not really interested in the whole thing. We're really interested in this one up here, I think, in terms of investment and capital works. Uh, but I hope you found that as interesting a read as as I did. I, I haven't got anything else to add. Your Worship, it's self-explanatory. Thank you, Councillor McNally. Uh, I just think that some of that in the... Minister's briefing statement, I think, what did he say? It is, this is about the state highway, but it applies to us there as well. On page 67, line 26, a period of flatline funding for road maintenance between 2017 and 2010 and 2017. Next page 28, impact of stretching the asset, ongoing underinvestment and preventative measures resulting in repeated cycles of damage and result as payments to Jared Fast, the cost of recovery from extreme weather and other disruptions is higher. And the key part to it for me is um, under 52 on page 71, we are committed to maintaining and operating a safe and accessible straightaway network. Work underway to strengthen our approach to maintenance and renewals includes reviewing our maintenance with contract model, researching and improve the asset management practices and collaborating with local government. So the um, hearing and MOMO Transport Excellent Partnership. So basically, everything we're trying to do by NDA in the contract is, is supported by that and, and by the funding model for GPS. And I just hope we get every dollar we apply for. Yeah. Thank you. We'll put this. Uh, sorry, Councillor Court. I don't think you want to write a reply. We'll put that to the vote. All in favour say aye. 
Those opposed to abstentions, that is carried. Now go to page 74, uh, which is for us to receive the report on our Northern Draft Regional Land Transport Plan, um, which went out for consultation that has actually closed off. But to make sure that you will read it, we put it in the agenda, didn't we? That you're so I'm happy to move this one if I can get a second there. Council and research. Um, I actually just wanted to uh, use this opportunity to thank um, Councillor McNally and Councillor Corp for the work you've been doing as our transport portfolio holders and getting out and about across our district um, a whole heck of a lot of hui, but also. Uh, using the mechanisms that we have available to us to be more responsive to what we actually hear on the ground is probably what I'm trying to say. Um, I wondered if either of you would be able to give us some insights into some of what you, you heard on the ground across those different meetings and um, if we can expect to see any big changes or, or how that will be captured in this report. Um, and this plan when it goes from being a draft to being a the plan. Yeah, well, a lot of the work was done by the likes of Jeff Devine sitting behind me here, who's um, obviously does the planning of it. Um, but going around the traps and listening to the people, it was all similar messaging that I heard. I didn't go to all of them and went to, I think she was Kaitai Kirikiri. I couldn't make either of those because we had something else on here that day. Um, but it was all just the same complaints we had this morning, really, or the you know, condition of the road, uh, maintenance requirements, drainage, culverts, all the stuff, and the GPS and this plan link up with that back to basics approach. Um, the only other thing that I Fire Hilda's picked up a couple of things and she might like to speak to it herself, but she said some, she sent an email through this morning and one thing she touched on, which is, uh, I'm just going to find it, my apologies. She says on page 90 that the plan admits our population is 50% rural, page 91, 55% of businesses are located in rural areas, just noting that the majority of road investing investment funding is still targeted for urban areas. Really great point and um, it might be something we missed in, the, in this document itself before we now. So we need submissions on this style of thing and the far north in particular, north and in general, our internal roading infrastructure, our main arterial and feeder roads for our product and produce are key to our economic viability up here. That's me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, Councillor Court. Um, this document was first written uh, six years ago, so the legislation requires that the Regional Land Transport Committee of the day refresh it, and they've gone through it with a microscope and refreshed it, and we need to acknowledge that that was not a small piece of work, so thank you. I went to four of the in-person sessions and two of the online sessions that they ran. You can hear Councillor McNally, the message pretty much was yes, maintenance and, and a perception as we, as you probably heard this morning, and apologies, I wasn't here. I didn't sleep in, I was actually at another meeting. Um, the perception is that we've been ignored and so I come back to the online tool is great. I had a play with it last night. I think it's fantastic. I still want to see signs on the road. I want to see signs at the big slips like Motor T because not everybody has access to the internet. And the sign will say, one, we know this slip is here. Um, you're one of however many hundreds we're working on it. You can expect to see something. Yeah. I think for me, it's about letting the customer know that we we know that they've got a problem and that we care about their problem. 
and we're working on fixing it. I think that's really important. In regard to the draft regional land transport plan, if you've read the government policy statement, which I had a number of times, right at the back in the ministerial, uh, the, the notice of ministerial expectations, he set some very rigid requirements on the New Zealand Transport Agency, such as we now require you to account for traffic management costs and report to me on traffic management costs. There are other things in there, but further on in the Minister's letter of expectations, he says that he expects the requirements that he's imposing on NZTA to roll out to road controlling authorities. So that means we are going to have to respond to that. So this document was written under the old GPS. We now have a new GPS. So at some point, I think Steve and the Regional Land Transport Committee are going to have to sit down and consider whether or not the current draft is still fit for purpose and there will be some changes required. What normally happens when we get into this tension is the government will give us enough money to maintain confidence and supply. So they keep the contracts running and they might take further time to consider other things such as our capital works program. But we're going to have to really step up our game, I think, in terms of demonstrating value for money spent. And I think that's a good thing. I'll stop at that. Thank you, Councillor Vucic. Thank you. Um, 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 I, I, um, yeah, sorry, on the Councillor Vucic was the second of the motion. I was the mover and asked a question on our transport portfolio hours. And after Councillor Vucic, we go to. Yeah, so thanks, Ms. Mead. Just on page 83, and just given my thanks for everybody's comments there, um, and this was the report from the chair, which said they're saying some other things. North and face of the task of catching up on years of deferred road maintenance, I've called that neglect, and lack of investment resilience. Um, and he also mentioned the further on another paragraph, Pacific storm connect, uh, coinciding factors, including extreme weather events, lack of resilience, and poor condition of our roads has elevated maintenance of Northern Road Network to a state of crisis management. So it's it's a bit disturbing, but I think one of the key things that we do, as he mentions it here, we must, Northern Roads are under-constructed and, and underperformed physically and are expensive to maintain. I really do think, and I wouldn't mind uh, Kelvin or whoever to respond to it, because we have to do something differently to get out of this Never, you know, never ending story. And we heard this morning from Pangaroo, who you know, was saying we've been neglected. And I understand there's a lot on our plate and there's a lot of difficulty, but changing the way we do things, I think, and do things for start with the roads, as was mentioned uh, by uh, Councillor Foy and McNally and everybody else, that drainage and big, you know, and drainage is key and based to be sorted out, you know, use forest construction technique. Set that base, and then and then sort of it. So we get up to a two hundred, you know, um, minimum of two hundred millimeter compacted base. I think is crucial. Doing those sort of things. So, so really, quick, the question of Melbourne is: Can we put something like that in place as soon as possible, so that those roads are cheaper to maintain? Maybe providing a contract has that as an incentive to increase the level, you know, the standard of the road. And they'll get in the centre and penalise if they do not, if the road starts to decline, because it's just not in the acceptable state we are in at the moment. Through the chair, there's probably a number of answers in that question. Um, so the first one is the idea of the unsealed road rehabilitation program, it's been previously known as the Centre of Excellence, um, is to understand the base formation, the running course, and the requirements of the road, and at the same time, do the improvements. Keeping in mind that to do that across Kaipara in 2021 through to 2023, $8 million um, covered 150 kilometres of road. Um, so while it is cheaper than ceiling, it is not a cheap exercise to actually upgrade. So 
um, to, to have that investment across the entire network is a long-term plan to, to restore those road debts and everything else. Um, but part of the business case for Wapkota NZTA supporting that approach is that it does, where those roads are treated, it does create um, reduced maintenance costs in the long term and reduced maintenance. Um, so as you get through the program, you actually start seeing those benefits. Um, when it comes to drainage at the moment, we are constrained by funding. Um, so um, just an example, our drainage maintenance discretionary budget due to the impacts of escalation and everything else for the far north is 170,000 for the year. Um, so if you use the examples that have been floating around about 320 culverts um, at $400 a pop, that is about 132,000 um, as of a total annual budget that covers heavy water table clearance, all your other things that are in there. Um, so there is um, conversation through the LTP process about investing more into that area, which will support those improvements. I think the other thing to be um, kind of just to clarify is there is a difference between maintenance um, and improvements. Um, and these rehabilitations and the improving the condition of the road is an improvement exercise funded out of improvement budgets. Maintenance, particularly for unsealed roads, is about slowing down the rate of degradation. Uh, so it's not that in, it, through your maintenance budgets, it's almost you know, under the current funding mechanisms, you cannot improve an unsealed road through maintenance. You can only maintain the current condition. Yeah, and thank you for that. And that's what I mean, doing something different, because yeah. you are, as you, as you pointed out correctly, there is significant saving maintenance if we can improve it get on yeah. the other side of the curve. Just on the urban, just to add a, a second question on the urban, I know there's a fight that there's, there's focus on the urban, and unfortunately, that doesn't sort of show the true picture in terms of delivering wealth to the country. As I mentioned, the GDP in that um, per capita, which was highest in Ohinga. And the biggest demand, if you look at the tons, kilometres, when you're dragging out logs, there's a huge demand. So it doesn't relate to our urban areas. And if you look at over the years, the biggest demand that has come on our roads has come from that. And that needs to be factored in as well, um, not just the, the population of a, a, you know, a city getting advantage when, when we're based with what we have. So that's my comments there. Thank you. How do we go? Sure, Al Ramon. I didn't charge my um, the hearing thing, so I'm probably really good at lip reading, but I'm only 40% good on that course. So, Tina Pimi Fakawati, I hope you have a new one at Kainui. But um, I'm just wondering if, if the comments that I wrote this morning. Um, could be, um, you know, put towards whatever we're talking about now, which is mainly uh, uh, in the forward that, um, you know, I, I think it's important for a regional land plan that the whole area is mentioned. It sort of only gets to Waitangi and stops in the forward. Um, and um, uh, we're... 50% um, a rural population and 55% of businesses are located in rural areas, but noting that the majority of road investment funding is still targeted for urban areas. Um, page 96, it's in the emails. Uh, air transport, um, yeah, I think that it, um, Pata Airport is still a critical, has a critical role to play rather than uh, Becca continuing to look at the option of Nico in um, Whangarei, because actually Kaitai is not far behind Whangarei in terms of how many flights a week. Um, it sounds crazy, but well, that's what, this, what it says in the book. Um, also, I think uh, in the regional land plan, it really only talks about Whangarei Hospital, which sort of um, discounts the importance of our own regional um, uh, far North hospitals in Kawakawa, Rawini and Kaitaia. You know, like in Kaitaia alone, there's still 2,300 people not registered in medical clinics due to shortage of doctors, it's worse for dentists, etc., etc. 
So um, Perth and Far North Hospital should be, you know, be part of, you know, transporting plans, issues, whatever. Whether it's part of the public transport plan, uh, etc., and the and the ferry. Um, uh, what else? And I just wondered, is all the Māori housing development factored into our roading? Because, uh, you know, like in Te Rarawa, it's been on the books since 2017 to have 50, 45 houses there. Ngāti Kuri have 58 homes. And although they may be resource consenting, but are we really, um, you know, is, is there a lot of consideration, your Kaikoui social housing? Blah, blah, blah. And uh, I suppose the other thing for me is the invisibility of Kaikui. It's not even in any sort of plan. Uh, and even the lack of, there's not much really talking about Hokianga either. So I just think um, there needs to be a little bit of visibility, a lot, lot more visibility than what it is. It's sort of more of an absence. <laughs> So um, if those could be just, and I do like the driver education programs. I see with the REAP program, 56 people failed the, the um, licensing. So I just hope there's a backup plan. I'm sure there would be. But hoi nā no koira aku. Next time I'll check before. I usually have to check when I go out the door. Cell phone. <laughs> so I didn't really talk to anyone and I turned my you know, my hands-free thing on, it's really loud because I can just turn it up, I can hear everybody. <laughs> but in here, I just can't hear anybody. Your Worship, can I just respond? Okay. First of all, I want to say how much I admire your work ethic. That you read the entire plan and picked up on that. Um, I found quite moving, so thank you, because we put an enormous amount of work into writing these plans, and I suspect bigger old people read them, so thank you. The second thing I wanted to give you is something on um, only capital projects worth more than $2 million. Can you hear me okay? Should I speak louder? Only two million projects worth $2 million or more. Actually, she's still coming before. Oh, sorry. She can't hear you. Okay. Calvin, could you relay? So. Um, what? Yeah. Councillor called thanking you Hi. actually for um, yeah, I got the time. And just to relay that within this um, plan, only projects over two million dollars are specifically mentioned. So the projects that fall below two million dollars are part of the council's um, long-term plans rather than the regional uh, plan okay. transport. Up the Kaikoui, yeah. So Kaikoui, North Hokianga will be part of the council. No, so long is picked up. Okay. Thank you. Not all the state highway networks, so, yeah. no, of which state and highway 15 and 12. Yeah. So uh, Waka Kotei's responsibility. So um, just on the state highway project, mm -hmm. um, Waka Kotei have been given another week to reconfirm the state highway improvement plan based on the outcomes of the GPS. So we expect to see that in early April, which will have their projects in it. We're open to give a writer's reply. Um, could say this on the agenda, we'll put it to a vote. All in favor say aye. Those opposed or abstentions. And that is carried. I will now close us with Karakia. Uh, we have a workshop plan just for online as we also need to have a break. So I'll call you back to quarter past one for our workshop. And following our workshop, we have an extra one here. That's right. That's the, what's that one? The extraordinary one still at three? Yes. Yeah, they hope you have a good time.